Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Elizabeth Miguala, who is the Senior Director and Head of Government Affairs for Qualcomm Africa and the Middle East. Elizabeth, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about smart digital development. What does smart digital development mean to you, and, and how is Qualcomm working towards it? So, uh, to me, uh, smart digital development is using ICT to provide effective and efficient, appropriate solutions to support socioeconomic development for all peoples in all regions of the world. And at our core, Qualcomm invents uh, breakthrough technologies that transform how the world connects, computes, and communicates. Uh, for more than 30 years now, Qualcomm has, through more than $51 billion spent in cumulative uh, R&D, helped to enable the entire mobile ecosystem and powered many of the smartphones that you see today. Yeah. So for example, Qualcomm's uh, uh, technological breakthroughs in 3G, 4G, and 5G communications systems, coupled with our advanced low power computing, have made it possible for robust ecosystems that we see today. Let's talk a little bit about innovation. Which single innovation, be it policy, strategy, or uh, innovative technology, product, etc., mm -hmm. uh, do you think is going to make the most difference? So, so I would put it like this. Um, a wireless technology is the underlying connectivity fabric okay, of secure, intelligent, the kind of hyper-connected world that we're all talking about at this show and looking forward to. And that is why, as Qualcomm, we continue to enable and invent technologies that will give you the next big thing. I think you've heard of connected cars, connected factories, etc. So the, f the main fabric is wireless technology, so wireless connectivity. So I would give that one the first, the first place. And what about, uh, let's talk about regulation. What are the, the principal technical regulatory and policy challenges uh, of extending broadband access in Africa? So I can think of three. I mean, there are many, but I think I'll take three and rank them. And the first thing I'd say is that what we really need are suitable ICT policies and regulations, including spectrum policy. I mean, everybody's been talking about spectrum here. But these are um, regulations and policies that will encourage and enable network operators to invest in rollout of the services but also enable them to offer those services in terms that the general population can access. So that would be the first one. Secondly, I talk about fiscal policy. Uh, fiscal policy has a role to play. And by that, uh, an example I can give you is that if you create an environment where you stimulate broadband, for example, by uh, staying away from excessive taxation of, say, services and, and devices. So fis fiscal um, policy has, has a role to play uh, in, in that. And then finally, um, relevant content coupled with an appropriate level of consumer awareness of the benefits of broadband is, is, is required. Oftentimes, people have the capability but are not aware of it or do not see the need. So I would give those three um, aspects uh, top priority. Now, yeah. The President of South Africa spoke about the importance of women in the digital era. How do you think we can best uh, promote the opportunities for the empowerment of women? Okay, so this is something that is important, something that I'm passionate about. And it is a complex challenge that we hear a lot about. And, and um, if I was to pick an area that I'm familiar with and that I think would make, would move the needle, uh, I want to acknowledge the fact that sound ICT policies are key to creating an environment that works, an IC environment that works for all stakeholders. And I would propose to start from there and observe that we really can't afford to forego 
of the population in these activities. So a pragmatic approach that I, I would propose that I have thought about is like, let's just take three steps, practical steps. The first being, determine the actual level of representation of women in ICT, particularly in the policy and regulatory sphere, okay? Find out how many. You can do it in a country, in a region, on a continent. So let's understand what the universe is that we are trying to work with. Having done that, if we're really serious, we should invest in bringing these um, practitioners together in whichever vehicle, be it a forum, whatever you can conceive. Bring them together and talk to them. Let's hear from them. Are they really unempowered? Are they, are they fine where they are? Are they looking for empowerment? Having done that, in, in, a, in, a, in a candid conversation with those who are wearing the shoes that are pinching, we will know what aspects are making it difficult for them, if indeed it is difficult for them to rise. And then through such interaction, I believe we can pick up one or two or three interventions that we can design and measure whether our interventions are making a difference for the women. So you can tell that this is something that I'm passionate about. Absolutely, yeah. no. and indeed. And uh, in terms of being here, your, your attendance here at ITU Telecom World, what's the value of attending this event for you? Okay, so this is another one of those exceptional opportunities we have. So for me, it's just in one place to interact with my peers and with government and policy makers and all stakeholders in one place and actually hear their perspectives about things that, that that I thought I knew. And, and specifically for me, you know, I've been um, drawn to the conversations about, uh, you know, spectrum access, obviously, but also that there's been a lot of interest in uh, 5G, you know, and preparing the, the region or the continent for 5G um, and, and what challenges there are and what it might take. So to me, that's a, a single area that, you know, interested me. Elizabeth Nicolo, thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you. Thank you.